Hi guys, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create a true or false quiz with images which is App Store ready. We first need to create a class to hold our questions, images and answers which are going to be stored in three separate arrays. One of the viewers from the first quiz tutorial asked if these items could be stored in a database but if we did that it would require more code. It is actually easier to store the information in a class. If you are storing information from the app let's say statistics then you would use a database. The images that I use in this app were images that I created with Adobe Draw for iPad. This free app can be used to create vector images. Then of course you could use Adobe Illustrator which is free with a 30 day trial. Or you could use Inkscape which is completely free. Alternatively you could pay for vector images but when you take a little time to learn to use Illustrator or Inkscape you can create exactly what you want. The answers are stored as booleans because 1. We are creating a true or false quiz and 2. I believe booleans use less memory than an actual string. In the activity underscore main dot xml, we will create a button that starts the quiz. We will use a relative layout because we want to be able to place the start button in the horizontal and vertical center of our layout. Make sure you switch between your design and text modes to see how your app looks. In the main activity, we will need to connect our start button created in XML to code that will start the quiz. We must first declare a member variable for our button. Let's call it mStartButton and let's initialize it by setting it to find view by id r.id.startButton and casting it to button. Next, we can create an on-click listener to manage button clicks. We're going to start the new activity, which is called quiz activity with an intent. We can also use intents to pass data stored in variables to other activities. You will notice that quiz activity is in red because it has not been created as yet. So I'm going to create it now, and then I'm going to run the app and see if our button works. We now need to work on our quiz interface. So let's delete the default padding and change it to a linear layout and set the orientation to vertical. Inside of our linear layout, we are going to create a relative layout which is going to hold two text views. The first text view is going to hold the word score and the second text view is going to hold the actual score. This second text view will have an ID of points. The image view to hold the images for each question is going to be placed outside the relative layout and we are going to set the width and the height of this image view to 150 pixels each. We will give the image view an ID of image view and set layout underscore gravity to center. It's very important that your images are 150 pixels 
by 150 pixels. If they're too big, your app will crash. Make sure you add a bottom margin and choose fit center for the scale type of our image view. Our question is going to be placed in a text view below the image view. We will give it an ID of question and set the text alignment to center. We will add our true and false buttons to a horizontal linear layout below the question text view. We will set the width of both of these buttons to zero and set the layout weights to one. This allows the buttons to be placed next to each other and take up equal space on the screen. If I had to set the weight of one button to two and the other button was left to one, the first button would take up two thirds of the available width and the second button would take up one third of the available width. It may seem like I have left a big space under the buttons, but I plan to use this space in a later tutorial where I show you how to monetize your app. The logic for our quiz is going to be placed in quiz activity. We must declare two text view variables, one for the score and the other for the question. We must declare a variable for our image view. We must declare two variables for our buttons. We must declare a Boolean variable to hold our answer. We must declare and initialize an integer for the score which is set to zero, and we must declare and initialize a variable for the question number, which we set to zero as well. In our onCreate method, we will initialize mScoreView, mImageView, mQuestion, mTrueButton, and mFalseButton. Outside of our onCreate method, we will create a method to update the questions. Each question is linked to an image. To get the first image from our image array, we can use quizbook.images and we can pass in mQuestionNumber into our square braces. If you recall, mQuestionNumber is set to zero and the first element of an array is at position zero. Similarly, to get the first question in our array, we use quizbook.questions and pass in mQuestionNumber. To get the answer, we would do the same thing. The last line of code in this method increases mQuestionNumber by 1. So every time this method is called, it will increase the mQuestionNumber variable by 1. The next method that we need to create is a method to update the score. It takes one parameter in the form of an integer. This method takes the score variable, which is an integer, and converts it to a string by concatenating it with an empty string, and then sets the text in mScoreView equal to it. Let's work on the logic for our true button. But first we need to create a results activity and an activity underscore results dot XML to handle how the quiz ends. We will first need an on-click listener. Inside of this on-click listener, 
we will start with an if statement. So if the user clicks on the true button and the answer is true, this is the code that will be executed. The score variable will first be updated and then we will call update score, which will add the score to M score view. We need to perform a check to see if we are on the last question of the quiz. If we are on the last question and we call update question, our app will crash. We must check to see if M question number is equal to the number of questions in the array, which is quizbook.questions.length. And if it is, we want to start the results activity. And like we did earlier, we are going to use intents. However, this time we need to pass the M score variable to the next activity. We have to create a bundle object by typing bundle bundle is equal to new bundle. Then bundle.putInt and this method is looking for a key and an integer value. So I gave my key the name of final score which is a string and I passed in the M score variable. Then we say I dot put extras and pass in bundle. Next, we must close this activity by typing quiz activity dot this dot finish. Then to start the results activity, we can call start activity and pass in I. If we are not at the last question, it would be okay to call update question. So we call this in the else clause. Now if the answer is wrong, we have to perform the same check as before. We must check to see if we are on the last question before we can update the question. So all we have to do is copy the code from before. Then we can copy all of the code for our true button and use it for the false button. We only have to make two changes. Rename the button to M false button and in the first if clause set M answer equal to false. Now let's go to activity underscore results dot XML add a text view that says congratulations and then test our app to see if it works. I forgot to call update question in the onCreate method. I'm going to add another text view which tells you how many questions you got correct and a button that would allow the user to retry the quiz. I'm going to use a relative layout and use the attribute layout below and set it to true to position the views under each other. In the results activity, we need to create variables for the text views M grade and M final score and a button variable for the retry button. Then we need to initialize these views in the onCreate method. We need to get our score from the last activity. We create a bundle object and we set it to get intent dot get extras. Create an integer variable name score and set it to bundle dot get int and pass in the key that we created in the previous activity. And using concatenation, we can pass in the score variable to our set text method. Next, we can use an if statement to set the text of M grade. If the user scores 9, 
then we set the text to outstanding. If the user score is 8, we set it to good work. If the user score is 7, we set it to good effort. And if the user score is less than 7, we ask them to go over their notes. Lastly, we need an on-click listener for the retry button. When this button is clicked, it's going to take you to the quiz activity and it's going to close the results activity. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up. If you would like to see more tutorials like this, hit subscribe, and as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>